Yeah, something. I've got it. Thank you very much. I was just thinking this morning that imagine if social media didn't exist. Imagine of the pictures and the videos of those people in Palestine and Gaza, those children weren't broadcast throughout the world as they are. Imagine if the videos and the images of the father bringing his children in bags, chopped up into little pieces, showing it to the world. Imagine if that had happened and we couldn't see that that had happened. Imagine if social media, if the internet didn't exist. What do you think the Israelis would be doing right now? There's no doubt that they would take this as an opportunity to obliterate and annihilate and disseminate all of those people living in that place, man, woman, and child. They are already doing this in plain sight. We are already seeing missiles come from the sky and dropping, raining down on children and destroying lives. And we are seeing that the people now have had enough of this. And I was just reading today the polls in this country of Norway. And I'm glad to announce to you that only 6% of the population of Norway wants Israel to continue doing what it's doing. This is a good thing because the people are different to the governments. And the people all across the world, when they are seeing what they are seeing, they imagine their own children, they imagine their own parents, they imagine their own grandparents. And enough is enough. And in fact, we will never forget what they've done. This can never be forgotten. We will never forget what the Israelis decided to do when they went into Gaza and there will always be this blemish and this stain on their reputation. They have now done irreparable damage to themselves. Well, the question is how do we move forward? The question is what do we do now? It's been over a hundred days and we've been speaking about boycott and we've been speaking about ceasefire. But I want to say something else today, which is the following. I want to speak to the politicians here in this country of Norway, because I know they hear what I say. I want to speak to the politicians and say to them the following. Your country itself was occupied in World War II by the Nazis. You know all about occupation. Norway was occupied by the Nazis and you asked for help. Now it's your time to give the help. And I know Norway is a small country, but the people of Norway are a historic people. And Norway played a key role in the Oslo Accords. So Norway can continue being front and center in the world stage. And the people of Norway, everyone here, do you agree with me that it's time now that we move forward? Do you agree with me that it's time now to call out the Israelis, these individuals who are destroying the people once and for all? Do you agree with me that Norway and the Scandinavian countries 
should take the front stage? Yeah. Are you ready for it? Yeah. The people are ready. Now the governments must do what they are commissioned to do, which is to follow the will of the people. Because the Israelis, they're not even doing a good job according to their own objectives. I just saw a video of a few Israeli army men standing down and getting shot by snipers. I have to be honest with you guys. I didn't feel sorry for the person getting shot. Did you feel sorry for them? No, no one feels sorry for baby killers. No. no one feels sorry for people that destroy the civilians. But Israel will continue doing this to its own demise. I want to tell you something. This does not help anyone but the Zionist cause. The corrupt Zionist cause. And so it's not in the interest of Norway or any other country in Europe to support such a war. And I'm sure, looking at the crowd today and seeing the people, I am sure of a certainty that Norway will be on the right side of history. Do you agree with me? Yeah. And for us to be on the right side of history, we must ask for what any human being with compassion and mercy would ask for. We are just saying, stop killing our children, stop killing our innocents, stop doing the immoral and start acting like humans. And I'll tell you something. I've never seen such cowardice from an army as the Israeli army. How many people have been killed? 30,000, 40,000, all these children. Imagine 10,000 children, 15,000 children being killed in front of you. Imagine if someone, sorry to say my friend, someone came and shot this child in the head in front of all of us. And we could stop it and no one's stopping it. Now we can stop it. Now we will stop it. Now we will raise our voices. We will make ourselves heard. Let me see you raise your voices. Free, free. Free, free. Free, free. I want to hear louder than that. Free, free. Free, free. Free, free. One more time louder than that. Free, free. Free, free. Free, free. And with that, I will conclude. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? You've just seen there some of the scenes of some of the activism that we've done uh, with IslamNet here in Norway. And IslamNet has been very, very active with the pro-Palestine cause hasn't it tell us some of the things that you guys have done the the palestinian cause first and foremost is one of the most important causes mm. for us to be addressing nowadays when we're seeing what we're seeing in gaza happening right now it would be a shame to stay quiet to be honest so many people are staying quiet nowadays so many uh, imams and mashayikh and not to name any names and we don't want to name and shame but you know that particular person over there now <laughs> You know, I mean, there's lots of uh, people that are just afraid of the consequences. What I've found quite inspiring about IslamNet and other organizations like it throughout the Western world is they haven't feared the consequences. They've been at the front line, haven't they? I think any, this is the cause at the moment. If, if, you're not, if you don't have the courage to stand up for the Palestinian cause at this time, and mashallah, I think you've done a tremendous job on Piers Morgan, debating the shumuli shumuli guy <laughs> <laughs> and dismantling dismantling the zionist narrative absolutely alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, i mean no it's true well, like, alhamdulillah it's all from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you if you can't do that nowadays is we have to question you your, your loyalty to the islamic cause really and and that's yani 
the masjid that you guys have been established, you guys have been part of establishing, and mm -hmm. you've, you've played a massive role in that. Alhamdulillah, yani we are doing the Palestinian activism in our community as well. Because of Muslims, it's, it's now the international Muslim civil rights movement, bro. And it's, we have to think of all of these things as interconnected. You can't just do dawah by itself. Dawah and activism and defending the rights of Muslims here and abroad, all of these things are in one basket, aren't they? they? They come together because if you are saying that we are only going to give dawah, we are only going to call people to Islam, and we are going to ignore the Palestinian cause, like any tens of thousands of people, Muslims, our brothers are being, are being massacred, and you are going to ignore that? Or are you going to any focus on petty issues where Muslims are disagreeing? Uh, and, and just completely disregard that this is the time for Muslims to come together and stand up against the injustices that, that's been doing that, I think you have a problem. So what it is, is that the, the Muslim civil rights movement has been, has been fantastic. So already we're seeing some changes in laws. In Sweden, we have seen some things, uh, some changes in laws vis-a-vis uh, -vis the bitter burning of the Quran and these kinds of things. And that's come off the back of some of the campaigns that the Islam Net have done in Scandinavia, isn't it? without a shadow of a doubt and he just putting out information about what's happening uh, with the quran burning uh, and all of that stuff and the pressure we're actually putting on the government yes. it, it and it shows that the pressure from the muslim world it has had an effect to an extent that any uh, uh, and, and obviously we any islam that can't take all the credit but the ummah as a whole yes. uh, would take the credit for that that any you know, the Erdogan and what he has any pressured uh, the, the Swedish government that if you don't stop the burning of the Quran we're not going to let you into NATO. Uh, unfortunately any th I think he has been lack he's been slacking on that specific point right now but uh, at the end of the day what I'm saying that if the Muslims they keep putting that pressure and keep standing up for their rights and just say that we don't accepting this anymore mm. it's, it's been taken too far. I think the way you're doing it is perfect. And, and the, the, the thing I like about Islam now, why I keep supporting them, is that they have a multifaceted approach. On the one hand, you've got the Waqf, you've got, which is an investment project, which now uh, funds a big part of the Dawah organization and funds all these events and all these activities in the Dawah Center and the Masjid and all these things. On the other hand, you have what we have here, which is a social media outlet. Uh, program which is kind of like an outreach program then you have a serious activism program now which is part and parcel part of the work i mean would you agree with that without a shadow of doubt mm -hmm. and that's actually why i would say any if you guys want to reap the rewards of the great work that we're doing together collectively i think it's time if you haven't become Absolutely. one of the loyalists of they have to become the loyalists now yeah it, it's it's time that yani, you become a regular supporter of the da'wah, of the Islamic cause. Because what it is, it's a trickle-down effect. And, and for example, from my understanding of Islam, they've actually been helping fund, raise funds for Palestine. Yes, we have. Now, there's two things you could say. You could say to raise funds for Palestine directly, which we've all been doing, and it's a very yes. good thing to do. But it's a better thing to set up those organizations which can help raise funds for Palestine, help do the activism for Palestine, help do the activism of the Muslim people in the West, help do all these kind of things. I think this kind of investment is incredible. Absolutely, because you know, to raise the actual funding for those in need in Palestine is one very important aspect of the whole picture. Yes. But at the same time, the yes. intellectual aspect, yeah. addressing their criticism and, and raising awareness for the Palestinian cause and teaching Muslims about the history yeah, yeah. of Palestine and giving them the arguments that they can use to present and debate uh, in, in, in their social gatherings to change the narrative. Mm. That's what we need to do as well. So brothers and sisters, if you guys become a part of this organization, Muhammad Hijab, mm. Islamnet, myself and all of us, and we are collectively doing that, Absolutely. raising awareness. We're all together with all one hand. And I'll tell you what, I mean, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Let's take a look at, I was just looking and we shouldn't compare. Maybe we shouldn't compare. But I was looking at some of the organizations that the Zionists have. Okay, sorry to say, but if you look, for example, at um, the Daily Wire, mm. sorry to say, yeah. we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, bro. Exactly. Hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe billions. At this point, billions of dollars. We're not talking about that money yeah. here. 
We're saying that give us 10% of that. If Islam Net has 10% of that, they'll invest it in the right places, do the right things. And what you'll see is process on the streets, f uh, fundraising, messages being built, uh, people being educated. This, this is what we need to do. We need to be able to respond. Akhi. And the best way we can do it is through funding these projects. I think after hearing this, honestly, after hearing this, yeah. if they're not clicking the link and spending 30 seconds of their time to do the right thing, I think uh, there's a question that they need to ask themselves, which is, uh, uh, am I sincere? Am I, um, do I really care about this? Do I care about this situation yeah. or not? That Allah's word is the higher most. But I think they do care and I think they will care and I think they will click the link and that's what they're going to do now. It's, what was it 10 seconds to fill out the form? Yeah, maybe something like that. Oh my it's God. Go quickly, inshallah. Oh my God. And it's about having the right mindset. Yes. If you're not willing to yani, invest uh, yeah. for your akhir and become a loyal supporter mm. of the Islamic cause, yeah. then there's an issue. So, Allah says in the Quran, He says, Ha antum ha ulai, tuda'awna li tunfiku fi sabirillah, fa minkum ma yabkhal, wa ma yabkhal fa inna ma yabkhalu an nafsih. Wallahu al ghani wa antum al fuqara. He says that, oh, some of you have been called. Some of you have been called to give in the sake of Allah, give sadaqah in the sake of Allah, and some of you will be stingy. So Allah saying this, not Muhammad Hijab, not Fat Quraysh, not Islam, net, not this one, or not that one, or that. <laughs> anyway, uh, These are the words of Allah. Are the words of Allah? That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِ الْقَوْمَ غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ وَأَمْثَلَكُمْ That if you turn around, if you turn away, that Allah will replace you with a people, not like you, and they won't be like you. So. May Allah make us of those people who Allah chooses and the way to choose, to be chosen by Allah is to choose Allah and the way to choose Allah is to click the link below and that's the way forward. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.